So this past summer as a sports broadcaster, I've been involved in the world of extreme calisthenics, working as the lead host for a league called Urban Fitness Extreme. It's a league with some really amazing athletes, and it's been a pleasure to broadcast the competition. The championship match for this season goes down on October 5th in Jersey City, New Jersey. I'm definitely excited to be on the call, but I'm even more excited today because joining me is one of the great athletes in the sport of extreme calisthenics who is competing in the championship match. He's from the Boogie Down Bronx. His name is Chris Joyce, and he joins me now. Chris, what's going on, what's man? Good, thanks. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Good day. Do a good day? Well, it's been a good season yes. for you in terms of the UFX, and I'm excited to have you here to talk about it. Always good to have a fellow New Yorker in here. How has this UFX season been for you thus far? Because, I mean, it's great because you're in the championship, but how's it been for you thus far? It's been crazy. It's been a roller coaster, ups and downs, Miami against uh, um, Brooklyn, against New Jersey. It's been some pretty crazy up and downs, but now I'm ready for the championship. I feel like it's going to be a crazy one to show LA a little something, something. Um, you know, Warren's my boy, prove it. It's my boy. So uh, it's not personal, but, <laughs> you know, I got to give it my all. Yeah, I, one of the things I got to let people know as somebody who's been working on this broadcast with the UFX is that these athletes are very competitive. There is a lot of trash talking. It is friendly. Not, nothing's gotten serious, but it is fun. I love the trash talking. I love the competition. But, Chris, let me start out with this because some of our viewers who might be watching this, they have no idea what extreme calisthenics is. So yeah. can you break it down for us? What is extreme calisthenics for somebody who's never seen this, never heard of this? What is it? So basically, you know how you do your pull-ups, your push-ups, your dips? It's doing it in a more extreme way. So if your numbers is at 10, 5, 15, trying to get it to the hundreds, you know, multiple times a day, et cetera, to do muscle-ups, handstand push-ups, to do 90s, like, it's a lot of workouts. It's a lot of different numbers you could do to make it more extreme. And this is all, as you can see from this video, right, this is all athletes using their body weight to do that. That is a very difficult form of exercise when you're trying to get it at a high number. And some people may look at that and say, why would I want to do that? But this is something that you love, correct? I, I extremely love it. I feel like once you get to the point of being comfortable in your workouts and you want to take it further, you just keep wanting to see the growth in it, keep wanting to see the growth. And you, you want to get addicted in a, in a good way. Yeah, addicting is a good way to fitness. That's never a bad thing <laughs> at all whatsoever. Now, Chris, you've been a standout in this sport, in extreme calisthenics, specifically and especially, I will say, with your specialty move. That is handstand push-ups. I would never attempt to try this. I would at least say that. This man is a master at this. I'll ask you this before we get to the handstand push-ups. How did you first get into calisthenics growing up in the Boogie Down Bronx, and what drew you to the sport? What made you say, okay, this is what I want to do, and I want to do this at an extreme or high level? So honestly, I was watching anime, like shows like Dragon Ball Z, et cetera, and um, it inspired me to want to be strong. And once I did it, I, I felt free, and it was something that I could invest in myself. You, I didn't need no money for it. And that's the cool thing about uh, bodyweight exercise. I don't have to buy any equipment. I could just train on my own you know, ability. And w once I got into the rhythm of doing that, it made, I got addicted to it to where I'm like, I, I want to be stronger. I want to be stronger. And handstand really, really stuck out to me. My grandma showed me how to do a handstand. Um, and from there, I just kept training, kept training, wanted to be the best at it. Yo, shout out to grandma for showing you how to do a, a handstand there. And also, shout out to the inspiration coming from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Our anime fans out there will be happy about that. Now, I talked about handstand push-ups. Yes. That is your specialty. That is your bag, uh, one of your specialties, I'll mm -hmm. say. Can you walk us through the technique of doing the handstand push-up? Also, because this is, I want to be clear to people, right? This is not just physically hard. This is also mentally challenging, right? So there's yeah. physical and mental challenges here. What are the physical and mental challenges of mastering this move? And how have you pushed the limits of this discipline to just go higher and higher at higher numbers within a certain span of time? Like, just talk to me all about that and your journey with the handstand push-ups. Okay, so with handstands, um, I feel like on the floor, it takes more balance, fingertips, strength, and being focused on not being too forward and not too back, like staying in that, in that center. But then when you transition to stuff like parallettes 
or straight bar is a whole different muscle. Your, your wrist got to be stronger. Your form got to be stronger. It's uh, different heights of doing it as well, where now the fear of falling off this bar is more damaging, you know, than it would be on the floor. So it's like all that plays into the mental aspect. And it's about being comfortable and what you what what the skill you brought yourself there like being comfortable in your own skill and confident so that way you know when you transition to these hard moves that you know you won't mess up you won't fall so in my head when i'm doing these these handstands i'm telling myself you got this you got this you got this because if you you have any doubt you can make a mistake and injure yourself so it's a big part of following through and not hesitating because you hesitate a lot of times that's when you mess up. All right, so no hesitation is key. I, yeah. For everybody who saw the video, this move is not easy at all. It is It is hard to do a handstand, yeah. right? Let's just be very clear. It is hard to do a handstand and then to push up. Extreme, it's extreme calisthenics. That, that, that's what it is when you do this very well. So I'm gonna ask you this, competing at such an elite level, what does your typical training regimen look like, right? Because there's a lot of training, there's a lot of practice that goes into this. How do you ensure that you're in peak condition for competitions like this UFX final that is coming up? So being that it's a, a team battle, uh, I try to focus on my individual part, but at the same time, if I have to give anything extra to my teammates to make them better or take a little bit more, so it's a strategic thing as well. But I train my skills, like you said, my handstands and uh, um, pull-ups and certain things as hard as I can. So day to day, I will try to like right now I'm doing like 100 to 200 handstands a day throughout the day. Uh, and that's just on the floor. And then on the uh, dip bar and on a straight bar, I, I, I run the relay that's required on top of that. So I'll do I try to do more that's required. So that way, when a day comes, it'll feel a little lighter. Man. 100 to 200 just on the floor. Impressive. Again, I can't even do one. <laughs> That's how one most people out here watch this. <laughs> can't they even do one? That is impressive. Now, the league, Urban Fitness Extreme, the league, it has grown significantly. And this current 2024 season, you know, the finals are going to be aired on Fox Sports 1. How has the increased visibility of the UFX impacted the sport? And then also just athletes like yourself. How has the visibility changed things for you? Well, honestly, um, I've been getting DMs of people in gyms showing me the show on, on, a, on a gym TV. Like, showing me the show is airing on a TV, and that really, really feels good. It's like something that I'm prideful of, something that I've worked really hard, hard my whole life, something I've been a part of my whole life. To see it on TV and so many people, like, people I don't even know, it's like, it's airing. Like, I see you. That's, that's crazy to me. So the visibility is insane, and I'm really hopeful in regards of it blowing up to more people because I feel like this is tough to do, and innately, a lot of humans respect strength and things that are hard to do so that's why we love the olympics that's why we love basketball etc different sports sports in general so i feel like this is a sport that should be respected and i'm i'm truly praying that uh people get to really digest this as time go on no nah, no doubt about that i think you hit the nail on the head there right in terms of people really respecting seeing any athlete even if it's sports you don't know right at yeah. a high level i think that's one of the I will say for the viewers, and even for me as somebody who's worked on broadcasting this, is there's a little bit of shock and awe, right? You've mm -hmm. seen people, if you've been around, we've seen growing up in New York City at the parks, some folks working on calisthenics. But at this level, it's a little bit like, wow, these athletes like yourself, really amazing in terms of what they do. But I got to talk to you about this. Let's talk about this season because you're representing Team Harlem. They have made it to the UFX 2024 final. So congratulations to you. What do you think has been the key to your team's success this season and the journey in leading up to this moment? What has been key to you guys getting to this moment where you have a shot to win the 2024 UFX title? Honestly, a, a lot of people might not know this, but even LA knows we had the fastest time, like the actual fastest time. So I think that um, my speed on handstands is a big major part because I'm the only person who was able to finish the whole 20 straight the only person to be able to finish the 10, 20, and 5 on handstands. So I think that that's a big key. Um, I also think our girls are pretty quick. Our ladies on the team are, are pretty fast. And together, we are humbled, like a humble team. So we are someone who call each other out in regards of we could be better at this, we could be better at that. We don't have any like cockiness to where, you know, it's overshadowing our progress. 
So I think that's key for our team excelling this one. All right, so a little bit of stripping the ego there. I do want people to know what Chris just did right there. Chris let him know. He's like, they know that we have had the fastest time here. Mm -hmm. They know what's up. Do you think that the just personally talking about you, right, on handstands and to let people know this is a competition between two teams in a race to 300 points in the competition, right, because of your time on the handstands in the mixed relay medley round, do you think that's a concern for L.A.? Is that something they should be worried about? You know I'm going to be asking you this before the broadcast, but is this something that they should be worried about here? I think that they were so concerned they had to switch out a player. That's Whoa. how concerned that they were. So they are trying to cover their bases, but I'm not worried because at the end of the day, I'm still going to give my all and complete it, and I have my teammates to back me up as well. So at the end of the day, they got to prove it. Uh might be a little pun there if for those who don't recognize. I like the uh, I like the confidence there. Okay, we got to talk about your opponents though. Team Los Angeles, they're the defending champions, right? They're known for consistency. Their skill, I think as well too, is something that's been yeah. very impressive for them. What do you think it's going to take for Harlem to dethrone them in this year's finals? Well, they are the champs and they are extremely fast and strong as well. They are mentally strong too. Like I haven't seen them shaken at all. So I feel like it isn't a mental thing that's going to beat them. It's all in performance. If we, we have to be pretty much perfect to beat them. We can't make mistakes. We can't transition badly on our tags. We got to make sure we focus on what we do and do it as fast and as well as possible because giving them any inch, we're going to lose because they have proved time and time again mentally they won't waver. So. They've also proved, I just want to note for people as they are looking forward to this finals, they have been pretty dominant in this score. I believe mm -hmm. they, in, they've won two of their competitions by the same amount. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been pretty dominant. Is, is that something in the back of your minds? It's like, look, we got to be competitive in this because there's the blowout factor there that we've seen from them and able to blow teams away. I know you respect them, but at the same time, you're like, look, we got to keep this thing close. Well, or have the lead. I don't want to say that you're right. Or, the, or have the lead, too. Well, in those matches that they blew those teams out, we still had a faster time than them. So, um, also, they never beat us before, ever. They have beat those teams before previously, but they never beat us. This is the first time they're going to face us in the history of UFX. So, I'm looking forward to meeting that challenge. There you go. That's what makes it such a good matchup here. Last thing for me, Chris. From looking beyond the finals, because the finals obviously so much this year with this season, we talked about the increased visibility. Where do you see the sport of extreme calisthenics going, let's say, in the next five years? Where do you see this sport growing? You've talked about the desire to want to see it blow up, but where do you see extreme calisthenics in 2029? Where do you see it? Honestly, I see it where there are going to be a lot of people, women and men, who wants to be a part of a team who wants their region represented. I feel like there will be jerseys where their favorite players and people who are competing have. I feel like that would be really awesome. I think that that's possible. I think that um, where the numbers of viewership increase extremely. And um, when you walk in a gym as one of these athletes that you are way, way, way more recognized and respected for what you do. That's something I want to definitely see for the sport, uh, for yourself. Um, it's been fun for me working as a, a broadcaster and journalist covering it. It's been really fun to see it and what you guys do at such a high level. And got to wish you good luck. Thank you. Uh, Saturday, October 5th is the championship. It will be Chris's team, Team Harlem, going up against the defending champions, Los Angeles. It going down at White Eagle Hall in Jersey City. Should be a fun one. Chris? Amazing work, amazing athlete. I appreciate you coming on to talk with me about the UFX and wishing you all the blessings and much continued success. Thank you so much. That is Chris Joyce. Check him out with Urban Fitness Extreme, airing on Fox Sports for the championship, which will be coming up soon. Chris, thank you once again. Thank appreciate you. it. We'll see you repping the BX as you have to. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.